Hey, what's up guys? Right in the eye here from Tech Doubles, coming to you guys today with the second installation of my PC build video and exactly how I configured all of the water cooling and exactly what's going on with the different loops independent. Okay, so the Predator 240 here is the only CPU loop that's in the system. So it's cooling the CPU independently on its own. So the 240 here is attached only to the Supremacy MX water block that came with the EK uh, Predator 240. And the only thing I did to change this configuration was that I flipped the fans around. So the fans were um, pulling air through the radiator this way and then exhausting it out the top of the radiator. So what I did is I flipped them around so that I could use um, the front of my case as an intake. So now they're blowing air through the radiator. So it's pushing air through instead of pulling air out. Unlike the Predator 360, which is the default configuration of how it comes out of the box, this one was the same way before I flipped it, but it's pulling air through the radiator out the top. So it was exhausting. So I had to make that an intake. So that's the only thing that I did to the uh, Predator 240. And then it is attached um, to this 4790K overclocked to 4.7 gigahertz at 1.311 volts. And the temperatures are almost unheard of. Um, in my environment, I am getting like nowhere above like 80 degrees Celsius and Audi 64 tested for like 30 minutes, which is pretty well. And I do have one trouble core, my core number one of the 0123. Core number one um, gets like 10, 10 degrees hotter than all the other ones at some points until it actually evens out. So it's rather annoying. So that would be the one that it would hit TJ Maxx on my other uh, coolers when I test it for that long. This one is not even coming anywhere close to that. So I'm really happy with the just the Predator 240 cooling that. And in games, in an actual real life benchmark or something like that, it doesn't even hit like 75 degrees Celsius or 70 degrees Celsius, right about 72. So, and it keeps the consistency of all the core's temperatures a lot more even than having that one jump all the way up 10 degrees higher than the other ones. Like right now I'm looking at my temperatures and the degrees are 29, 30, 29, 32. And then that's just staying right around there. Um, and like I said, the, um, sorry about that, my phone going off, doing this live for you guys. So, um, yeah, so it's pretty good temperature. So the Predator 240, highly recommended as an independent CPU cooler. Um, the 360 would even just do even better. So, um, and that's with the fan speed, not even like ridiculously high either. Like I actually turned the fan speed down from what it comes to fault, uh, due to the PD PWM connections. So now we're going to get to the uh, Predator 360 and exactly how I configured it to only work as an independent loop to the full cover water blocks from EVGA. These are the Titan X Acetol um, what the hell, copper base water blocks. So you can see the copper there instead of the nickel plating. You can see that. And it also has the really nice back plates there, as you can see. Um, so all this, all the water cooling stuff here was from uh, EK. So you guys can find all of this stuff on EK's website. I will have their website uh, linked down below, as well as uh, maybe a couple of links to the Predators and the uh, water blocks themselves, just so you guys can find them immediately and get the same exact ones that you know are compatible with my system and your system as well. I did see some people down in the comments. One person in particular said, uh, just today, I think, um, asked me that, or he said that he wanted to do the same exact thing, but he didn't know how I did it. So this is for you, man. I got you. Um, if you have any other questions, please leave a comment down below. I highly appreciate your guys' comments. I'm really trying to kick off my YouTube and stuff like that. So please like, comment, and share. Uh, subscribe as well if you haven't already. Um, it does help me out a lot. I look forward to bringing more content like this to you guys. And just letting you guys know information as I will test it for you, give you guys the information, then you guys can go do it yourself. So you guys have that quality assurance to know that it actually works. So the 360mm radiator. So this piece here. The one that's in the back, this one is the male quick disconnect coupling that was attached to this female longer quick disconnect coupling. So it was attached here. I'm going to show you guys the nomenclature on the box here. So as we see it here, so this is the shorter end with the male one and this is the longer end here. So I took this one here where this is and attached it to this side. I used the rotary fitting from that solid tube to attach it to this one so I could have matching rotary fittings. So that was a little bit of a pain. You didn't need like a 9 or a 10 millimeter Allen key to get that rotary fitting actually off and attach it to this one. So um, when you're actually building the system, you're going to want to leak test it. So that that's going to be the main piece that you're going to want to leak test is whether or not you connected the rotary fitting to this side here correctly without any leakage. I tested it for a mere six hours 
um, just running it on full blast, sitting on my desk, uh, connected to these water blocks um, with nothing, not attached to anything, just to make sure that that wasn't leaking because everything else comes by the factory. Everything else is done by the factory, so you don't have to worry about that. They factory tested it already. I mean, I hope if it if it doesn't if it leaks because of the factory uh, defects, then that's something that you're gonna have to take up with EK themselves. I had I did have to RMA this radiator here um, because the la the first one I got the uh, where the threading was to the pump there. It's made out of plastic, un opposed to this side where the end tank is. Um, it's actually made out of actual metal and stuff like that. Um, so this one's plastic, so I guess in the manufacturing process, it over-tightened the compression fitting, the rotary compression fitting on there, because it's done by a wrench here. Um, and it actually stripped the plastic threads that were on the pump, the DDC pump, so it was leaking. So glad I didn't put it in yet. So that's what you you're, uh, get another thing. You're going to want to make sure that when you attach that, you could just use a compression fitting. You could just use, like, so here's the Supremacy MS water block. You could just take the same fitting that is attached to the... Um, the smaller hose and just attach this directly to that part it'll work that way and then you just finger tighten it on make sure you don't tighten it too much because it is plastic on the the pump there but i um this the, the, the rotary fittings are screwed on by with a wrench because um you have to use the wrench to spin on the part that actually has the threads to go into the pump because um it rotors so if you just spin this side you're just going to be spinning it all day because it, it rotates that's why it's a rotary fitting um so bear with me, guys. This video is going to be kind of long. I really wanted to hit everyone's questions. So that's what happened. So this fitting here, this whole tube here in the back, came off of this this part right there. Okay. So that's that's how I did it. That that's the only piece that I chained from the 360 radiator, and this is the long tubing that I took off of the Supremacy MX water block, which was attached to this part here. So what I did is I replaced this tubing with the rotary fitting that was here. I put that one here attached to the smaller end of the uh, male quick disconnect. So that's all I did. So I just changed out this tube that was connected to the radiator for the um, adjacent one. Um, for, for the end, basically what you want to do is you want to connect the end of the tubing that doesn't have a quick disconnect. So then you can quick di disconnect loop. So this one didn't have a quick disconnect there. So what did I do? I didn't remove the one that had the quick disconnect already there. I took off the other side and then attached it there. That's exactly how I did it. That's the only thing that I did. It really is. It, it seems really difficult to understand. I mean, even when I'm explaining it, I mean, even when I was doing it, it just seemed a little difficult. But the hardest thing to do was really just to get that rotary fitting off that I wanted to use from this side. That's the hardest thing to do. But like I said, you don't even need to do that. You could just remove this from the CPU water block and then just attach it directly to the top of your radiator and then just unscrew this whole thing and then you'd be fine. You don't need a rotary fitting there. I just wanted it to look that way on purpose. So that's all you did. That's all I had to do was just make it where both ends of the radiator inlet and outlet both have a quick disconnect compatible coupling there. Uh, of course, opposite sides, you want opposite ones. So it actually works together. So like I said, the, um, inlet to the radiator has a female and the outlet to the radiator coming out of the pump has a male. So then when you look at the, uh, water blocks here, they have a male and a female, the shorter end, um, being the male one, which is this one here. And then the longer end, which is this one here, or this one here, which is the female end, which is exactly why I have male shorter to longer female. And then that goes into the inlet of the water block. And then the outlet of the water block has a shorter female or sh shorter male, sorry. And then it goes into the inlet of the female longer water block. And then that exits here on this side, goes up into the uh, shorter end male into the longer end female so that's how it loops together so starting with the outlet of the coolant coolest coming out of the radiator it is male female then it goes in male female it goes in comes out male female so all of the exiting spots of your water blocks and your radiator are both populated with uh, male quick disconnect couplings at the end of that tube that's, a, that's the easiest way to do it. And then all of the parts going into whatever the next block is or radiator is populated with a female quick disconnect coupling. So that's, that, that, that's, that's as simple as it is right there, guys. That's exactly how I did it. And I didn't do anything to the Predator 240. So that's it. So then I just mounted up on the top of my case and then there you go. So I hope I helped you guys a lot. I mean, I'll go over it one more time. So let me just show you guys the box again. So on the box, you can see that um, it has the... 
piece going uh, out of the radiator. So this is the one going out. So think of it as the th my radiator is mounted up like that. This is the this is the this is the top up here. And this is the bottom that you're looking at. So the far end of the of the piece here is where the pump is. That's the outlet. So I took this piece here and put it on that outlet, and then left the the female piece on the uh, inlet. So that's exactly how I did it. And then this is the tubing that you have saved over. So I'll tell you guys the supplies that I did. I did pick up um, two extra, let me show you guys here. I picked up two extra um, nickel plated compression fittings just off of their web store. And I'll leave a link to that down below as well. So I just picked up the um, two of these. It's just a single standalone uh, EKFCF or ACF fitting um, 10, slash 16 millimeter nickel plated compression fitting that's all i did was pick up two of those just as, just so i had backups in case i needed them but it turns out i had these ones here so i didn't even need them they just left in their packaging i also picked up um let me see here i also picked up this as well so this is the just some of the identical zmt tubing so i just picked up a little kit of this it was like five bucks for this they just they just sent it to you just like this it's not the huge bundle that comes in the box and everything i just picked up a kit of this i think it's like maybe um like a yard long something like that i just picked up this just in case i needed some extra tubing because what you could have done is you could have just completely removed the compress the fitting the coupling here and just put it on a new piece of tubing and then attach a new fitting to it and then attach that there that'll work fine too it's something that you will need for bleeding the system is you will need some e-coolant this is the ek e-coolant evo clear this is a uh, 1000 milliliters of it um i did refill this loop twice and as you can see on the line there, I used about half of it. So I refilled the loop um, just with the radiator twice because I wanted to get rid of all the gunk that comes in the manufacturing process and stuff like that just so it doesn't clog up my water blocks. So I didn't do that. So that's what you're going to get. You're going you're to want to get some of those things. You're going to want to get these supplies because you will need, unless you want to reuse the same fluid you take out, you will need this for sure. Um, if you guys think you're going to make a mistake or you want to change like the tubing length, you will need to pick up some of the tubing. I recommend using the ZMT tubing. I mean, you can change this to clear, but I think it looks really clean with all black. It matches the predator as well. So you will pick up some of this. And then if you can want to, if you want to be, make sure that you're good as far as fittings go, you can pick up a couple extra fittings and that's basically it guys, as well as your predator. And then, so now I just have an extra Supremacy MX water block, so I could just go pick up like a cool stream PE radiator. Uh, I already have the tubing and fittings, four of them, so I could make another loop on something else with this this right here. So that's pretty cool. I mean, the only thing the downside to buying this and that is I am left with this. So this costs like fifty bucks. So it's like fifty extra dollars that I didn't have to spend if I would just bought them all individually. But they, like I said, they don't sell the quick disconnects. So. That's the thing. All right, guys, this has been Right in the Eye here from Tech Doubles, coming to you guys with this second installation of this uh, ongoing water cooling build. Um, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Please like, comment, and subscribe down below. Uh, leave any comments you guys have, any questions about it. Uh, please leave a comment if you guys are fulfilled, and this actually helped you guys out a lot of how to actually make this yourself. I did see a comment, like I said earlier, of someone who actually said he wanted to do this identical thing, but he didn't know how to do it. So. You, sir, please let me know if you have any questions and if this actually helped you. Like I said, guys, I will see you guys in the next video.